Hello there. Three UFOs have been shot down over North America by the US and Canada. This is very strange. Now just a heads up, we have a little surprise later on in the video. Now the US, partnered with Canada, has now shot down three unidentified flying objects over North American airspace within a week. Well, let's be a bit more accurate. They were all initially classified as unidentified objects, presumably to keep the F out of UFO. With reports coming out that when old data is examined, objects like these have been coming and going at will all over the place for years. Now one of the UFOs shot down has been identified. A Chinese spy, I mean weather balloon. But a North American Aerospace Defence Command spokesman, Major Olivier Gallant, said that the military know what the other two are but will remain tight-lipped about them. They've now been identified by and to those who need to know. But it's reported by CBC that the latest object to be downed was a small cylindrical object with much speculation about what was keeping it aloft at 40,000 feet or seven and a half miles above the Yukon, and efforts are underway to recover the object to discover its origins and purpose. And on Friday, the US shot down an object described as being the size of a small car that had been flying or hovering at about 40,000 feet over Alaska. And the US said the unidentified object fell into iced up water and they were in the process of recovering it to ascertain its origins and purpose. So what is going on? A sudden spate of UFOs without the F. I mean, they were unidentified objects that were flying, weren't they? But what's with us? We see something we don't understand, and after watching it for a while, the first decision we reach is that of shooting first and understanding later. Could that be something we end up bitterly regretting? The backlash against Sadiq Khan's ULEZ expansion is growing, says the Times. But Khan is still forging ahead. He's convinced that he's right to do so, and no amount of opposition will stop him. Only ousting him from City Hall will put a stop to his determination to get the ordinary person onto bikes, buses and shoe leather. And here's an excerpt from the piece that tells you exactly where we're all now headed. One idea he has is to introduce smart charging, where an algorithm would calculate your car type, location and income and charge a personalised fee per mile. Think about the scope of the information required to do that. Khan City Hall would need access to your bank details, your income tax information and your employment or self-employment income information as well. His little busybodies would have to know everything there is to know about you so as they can treat you like a mouse in a scientist's maze. And the easy way into that would be the imposition of a UK-wide central bank digital currency, something that is coming fast down the tracks like an express train. And Khan is now targeting those people who bought diesel cars a few years ago in order to save the planet. Those people can't now even give those no longer compliant cars away in part exchange for an electric vehicle. But then, in about 10 or so years' time, when people start looking in proper detail at how damaging to the earth electric vehicles really are, EV drivers will be punished. Oh yes, then the next great push will come, possibly for a hydrogen power. And all the while, big corporate giants aided and abetted by government will keep forcing the proletariat to fork out for new planet-saving cars and devices, while they jet about the place from one luxurious location to another and pontificate to the rest of us, demanding we comply with their diktats. Welcome to your new future. 
So the Brussels Eurocrats are still doing their best to play silly beggars by using our access to the EU Horizon Science Project to try and get us to hand over Northern Ireland to them as punishment for Brexit. This has been going on since the ink dried on the agreements we signed with the EU. So it is nice to hear that the new Science Secretary, Michelle Donnellan, is getting ready to ditch thoughts of Horizon and forge ahead with a new science partnership with the US, Japan and Switzerland. But words is words and actions is actions. And in a piece for The Telegraph, Donnellan said that we would forge ahead with this new arrangement if we cannot associate with the EU Horizon programme. That tells me that the UK government is still wedded to all things EU and would only ever consider going further afield in extremis. The EU will continue to needle the UK at every opportunity and the more we try to cosy back up to them, the worse it will get. But it seems that our Tory government believe that if we are nice to the EU27, they will be oh so nice back to us. How's that been going so far? I say let's get global and leave Brussels to their own devices. But at the same time, we're also hearing via Bloomberg about Rishi Sunak's quiet moves to get back into Brussels' good books. Let's be honest about this. People are in mourning for what's happened uh, with GB News. And here's why. You don't give people a taste of what untamed and uncensored journalism looks like, only to constructively remove it from your platform by pulling the rug from under the feet of your most uh, boundary-pushing star, whilst still claiming to be Britain's uncensored channel. For many people, tuning into GB News, watching the Mark Stein show, was the highlight of the day's viewing, and his eagerly anticipated return to GB News has now not happened after his spate of ill health. For goodness sake, GB News, the man had a heart attack live in the middle of one of your shows and carried on. That's what I call dedication. So his loss from easy access viewing via the uh, living room television is a very real experience for a lot of people and that sense of loss is palliable. Let's face it, at the end of last year there was a, a noticeable shift in GB News and their readiness to approach certain topics. It was like the gusto had gone. If that shift in position is due to the Ofcom retraining or editorial interference, I have no idea. But what I do know is the change has been noticeable. I mean, for months we have had a, a nightly slot dedicating, uh, dedicated to hating Prince Harry. Love him or loathe him matters not. Nobody really cares about him enough to hate him as much as we are being told to hate him. We don't need to be corralled into hating Prince Harry on a daily basis, for goodness sake. <clears throat> I have to say I grew to love GB News, and I will still go to YouTube to watch the brilliant Neil Oliver and the mischievous charmer Lawrence Fox, to name but a few. But of late, it's almost as if the, the lights have dimmed a little for many of the other presenters. It, it, it's noticeable, you can see it, and that's what makes this whole thing so awful, because last year there was a point where the censoring seemed almost non-existent on GB News. And for a moment, it was almost as if they could actually bring down the establishment and effect real change by awakening the sleeping masses and giving voice to the people, blah, 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 as what's-her-face would say. Oh, look, dear, they said the V-word on GB News and didn't get cancelled. Not like on YouTube, where they have to self-censor. Of course... We have to self-censor on YouTube. And this has added, a, has added a creative challenge for YouTubers. But it's common knowledge to YouTube viewers that self-censorship is taking place and creative language and terminology has become a given in order to not fall foul of the watchers. I don't know if this can be repaired, but Stein must be reinstated within GB News if the channel doesn't want to lose any more viewers. If Stein is reinstated, there may be some hope that the regulators will step back because they will know the fight is on. But at the moment, I find it hard to watch the channel because outside of the aforementioned presenter, presenters, 
individual segments which are cut up on YouTube. Um, watching GB News is, it's like watching old paint beginning to crack in fast forward. Like the set is about to start crumbling around them as the WEF's reach now goes behind the doors of the GB News newsroom via a, a few harsh words from, from Ofcom. I genuinely pity the great presenters that are on the channel because you can see in their eyes that something isn't right, that something has changed. Don't get me wrong, there are one or two presenters that pushed the government's agenda and mandates a few years ago. And in the past, I have turned off the app for that very reason. But Nana, Calvin, Patrick, hey guys, you, you've also been like a breath of fresh air and others as well. Hang on, I missed up Bev Turner. See what I mean? Real talent with a, a sinister censoring hand from Ofsted and the WEF w -E -F, w -E -F reaching across their mouths to censor them. It's very sad. Mark Stein and Neil Oliver have been the soul of GB News. And it feels like that soul has now been split in two. That looks about right. So, yeah. So that was a good day's filming today, wasn't it? Excellent day's filming today, indeed, yes. So we're out in the countryside once again, looking around. Around in Wales, there's sheep on the hills who haven't been toilet trained, I gather. So uh, don't they do that in Wales? No, they don't. no. Right, OK. No. Isn't that a bit strange? Yes, and we had a, a fantastic day's interviewing yesterday not it didn't happen it's so uh, i'm afraid that that very special interview didn't happen never mind but uh anyway more to the point i've been you know thinking you know that our jeff here i i mean you haven't had the job have you no no i've avoided that particular thing. yes um okay so now's your chance no it's safe and effective yes no. yes yes no. 